character Chainsaw Sally was actually created um, to be a she was to be like a promotional tool, a hostess to promote our, a live show, Silver Scream, which eventually became a movie, Silver Scream. It was this horror comedy musical, and as soon as anybody who's a horror fan, generally when they hear the word musical, they run screaming in the other direction. I'm one of them. I understand. To jump from stage to movies uh, was awkward, and it required a lot of uh, self-discipline and a lot of learning on my own. I, um, when you're directing a stage show, you have to make everything huge. When you're directing a film, you have to put a leash on that to a great degree. And you have to make things intimate. Um, it, it, was, it was a hard transition. Uh, if you ever watch Silver Scream, you'll see that it's very much, it, it wasn't even rewritten as a screenplay, it stayed a stage play, and it looks like a stage play. Um, there's a big difference in the way Silver Scream was directed and the way Chainsaw Sally was directed. Silver Scream's not like a normal musical. It's very, it's very, I don't want to say Rocky Horror, it's, but it's more rock and roll, Danny Elfman kind of music. So, it's sort of like watching a live haunted house. Um, so to express that and try and bridge the gap between horror fans and this, this really interesting creative thing that they could possibly experience, uh, we created Chainsaw Sally to try and draw some people in. Um, and she was actually just a website character. She was just a, a hostess on the website. And eventually the Chainsaw Sally website also started doing movie reviews and other things, and then she started getting this fan base that just grew like mad. I mean, it was completely unexpected. We, never, we had no idea. I still don't understand why she's got so much attention, but, you know, we're not arguing with it. So when we were looking for the next project after the Silver Scream movie, it made sense to do a movie about Chainsaw Sally because that's what everybody was asking about. So that's um, how the character developed, and then of course we had to give her some more dimension so that she could actually work in a film. My inspiration for Chainsaw Sally uh, was actually uh, my wife. We had together invented this character, and so when it came time to, to make a movie of it, um, of, of Sally, based on the, the website that we had developed together, um, it was really written for her. It was written with her in mind. I mean, there was just no question. It's not like you, we could have gone somewhere else and found another Sally. So my inspiration for Chainsaw Sally, the movie, uh, was April. To encompass the whole character of Chainsaw Sally, um, there's two sides to her personality. There's the very normal librarian side that she puts on uh, when she's in public and trying to act like a normal member of society, which was actually the harder part to play. And then there's Crazy Sally, um, who's Sally at home when she's relaxing with her brother. That was very easy because that was really just me and uh, the actor Alec Joseph, who plays Ruby, just fooling around being ourselves, except that, you know, we were pretending to kill people. And, you know, who doesn't want to do that from time to time? But, and then there's a uh, Killer Sally, which is actually, I guess, just an extended version of Sally at home. She's crazy, but she's a little more serious because she's getting down to business. She's stalking people down and she's killing them. Sally is pretty much all April. Um, I put words in her mouth and I give her situations to be in, but uh, the character Sally is just April. Um, I mean, it's really written for her, with her personality in mind, and, you know, I, I give her jokes and I give her uh, a little bit of personality, but basically all I'm doing is punching up what April's already developed. Um, Sally kills people, uh, not, not just for the sheer joy of it, she does enjoy it, but it's mostly, um, she wants to make the world a better place. She kills people that she thinks deserve it. Um, you know, if they're being jerks or they're somehow interrupting society in a way that she doesn't like. 
um, talking in the library and not returning a library book. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to kill people like that? The biggest part of the plot in the plot in this in the actual movie, a lot of her motivation is defending her home and defending Ruby, because that is the number one priority beyond all the little just making the world a better place killings. She has to keep Ruby safe, and she has to keep herself safe, and she has to keep their home an absolute secret. Nobody can know about them. So if anything threatens that, they have to go. Alec and I have, have actually been friends for a long time, for several years. So it really wasn't hard at all for us to play brother and sister, because we've been good friends. Sally and Ruby at home play around, they're goofy, they, they make really sick jokes, and you know, they bicker with each other, but in a really friendly, loving kind of way. And Alec and I do that all the time. I mean, um, I don't know if it's because I'm older or what, but yeah, I do act kind of like an older sister to Alec. And, yeah, we bicker, we play, we poke fun at each other, you know. It's very much the same kind of relationship. It seems that when you write, whether you know it or not, you're writing from something you know. There's, there's something that's part of you or some part of your history that kind of creeps into it, whether you know it or not. Um, it wasn't until I watched the movie, uh, after it was all said and done, that I realized that to a great degree, um, I was writing about my sister and I, who, through um, uh, our, our mother having a lot of illnesses when we were young, we were to a left to our own uh, devices in a trailer in the woods in Mississippi where we kind of raised each other through from the time I was 13 years old. Um, when, I, when I look back at the movie, I can see that uh, with me being Sally and uh, April be or Katie being Ruby. Um, I, can, I can see that relationship. The only big difference is that we didn't hack people up and eat them. To prepare for, for shooting a horror movie, which is something that I'd never done before, um, I went back and rewatched a few of my favorites, and uh, Jimmy and I had talked about some films that we both liked, and he gave me an idea of uh, the kind of style he wanted to shoot in, and he wanted a film that was going to be very colorful, uh, something that was going to be reminiscent of some of his favorite horror movies, and that included, of course, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Suspiria, as far as some of this really really crazy lighting that we managed to pull off, especially in the, in the Sally Ruby trailer scenes. There was so much to see in every single corner of, of this space. So much work went into it that uh, we were very aware we wanted to show as much as we could. and It was just really tough and tight quarters. But that was a sequence where we threw all conventional lighting technique out the window and uh, just went with you know something that was very reminiscent of you know 70s Italian horror films, and uh, that, was, that was a challenge and, and a lot of fun, too, and that's footage I think I'm, I'm the most proud of. The most challenging thing about Chainsaw Sally um, was actually making Joe Anastasio's head come flying off with a cable guy. There you go. That's on Joe's head. That's a head. All right, in the back of the van is a pole. Okay. Can you please grab that pole? Yes, sir. I also play the cable guy, which was very interesting. And uh, when I read the script and everything, I was going to lose my head. And the first thought that came into my mind was whether it was the sequel. And what the fuck happened to you? Body. So what was the 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 scene that was the most difficult for you to do the stunt double rape scene which is why i'm laying on the couch right now <laughs> in pain <laughs> oh, oh wow it's cleaned off now but it was it was huh? bleeding before <laughs> we've got some realistic fx on this picture mm -hmm. Jimmy wanted to shoot it as if I, I was really fighting them, and, and you know, so I w had three guys. I was fighting with three guys, and I got a little bruised. And <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna put this on the DVD, are we? <laughs> three. Oh, did I step on you? No, he did. <laughs> he did. Right, shut up and 
take it. I was nervous at the premiere because my dad was going to be there and I wasn't sure how he was going to react to it. So the day before, I called him up and I was like, Dad, I want to tell you what happens to me in this movie. So, you know, <laughs> I was nervous about him seeing me kiss another girl and how I die in the movie. But he's, he, he was like, oh, I know, you're just, you're just acting and you have to do what you have to do. That was really good. <laughs> Hi, Mom! <laughs> and uh, one was the ice cream girl gag where she's chained up to the cross and Sally's putting the acid down her throat and it's dissolving everything and just comes out the, the bottom end. That was a lot of fun, only because it was just nasty. Yes. I'm a representative from the MPAA. I'm here to make sure that this adheres to a PG-13 rating. Yeah, this goes to this goes our R. This is our R rating now. Well, it's not toxic. I know. It's, it's actually good. Like it's, it's the same cold. stuff that comes out of your ass all the time. It's Relax. Not cold. <laughs> it's not cold. <laughs> and it's not that liquidy. You ever <laughs> taken a cold shit? You girls are Once. just too picky. <laughs> cold shit. <laughs> I've had a good cold shit. I'm a man. I'm not afraid to admit it. Well, the ice cream girl stuff is a lot of fun. It'll probably disturb a few people. And at least with the movies I've made, that's been a constant goal. <laughs> Just fill it up. No, don't, don't waste anything. Put it all in. It was funny when we got to the part where Sally poured the acid down my throat and my insides came out because just to hear that sound of that stuff hitting the bucket, it just cracked me up and I was trying so hard not to laugh. Wait, our thing is locked. Go back up. Mike, go back up quickly. Okay. Go, 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 go. Just stay with it. And if you really wanted to, you, you could eat it if you got hungry. Horror movies are kind of a strange animal. They can be a lot of fun to watch for some people, and they can be grueling to watch for other people. They are some of the most passionately loved and hated movies of any genre, of any time period in cinema. But the amazing thing working on it is how much fun everybody is having doing what could be perceived as these horrible things on film. Probably the funnest moments were any moment where I'm splattered with blood. Oh God! Oh my God! My God! That was awesome. There's just something so exhilarating about that, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm really sick. I probably have some issues. But when I'm when we were pretending to kill people, and there would be just tons of blood just spraying all over me, that's just. It, I don't know, it makes me feel more alive to watch somebody pretending to die underneath me. Well, the most fun day was probably the day that we uh, killed Harvey. It's always fun to get messy. Everyone ready? The cameras are good. That's all you do. Jimmy's like, here, here, this is what I want to do, this is what we need to see, and here's some drawings and, you know, suggestions, and really brought a lot to the table. And then that really allowed me just to work on the mechanics of, of how to make these work. Well, I mean, what I think would be kind of nice is to start here and go fast backwards. Because this is going to be a spot that's going to be right, you're gonna have to optimal for, uh, for a one lot of the, One of the things that... 
One of the things I want to try um, is I need Jimmy to is to come in and turn into the action where Cynthia falls. I don't know what it looked like. I just want to see it. Is it conceivable? It's conceivable. And action. <laughs> Everybody stand back for the little splashy section. Yeah, it's supposed to be freaky. As it turns out, it is a horror movie. Oh, it's all over me. It's making me want yeah. dessert. It's sexy. <laughs> it's getting me hot. Oh, shit. <laughs> right in the eye. Down in his eye. <laughs> what are the odds? Fucking aim. <laughs> Is that far enough ahead now, Jimmy? Yeah, I think so. You smell so sweet. All right, let's get to places. Boys, you ready? Sure. All right, kick in. Go with the dialogue. Holy shit on a stick. What kind of egg? I met Jimmy in April when I was here in Baltimore for something or other and became impressed with them as nice people. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I met some nice people and let it go at that. Mm -hmm. Well, then Jimmy sent me a, a video, which I found impressive. Herschel scared the hell out of me. Um, not because of any reason uh, with, with his personality, but because he's... He's so wise, and he's so gentle, and he's so, uh, he's, he's, you can, you can just look at the man and see that there's something going on in his head all the time. I remember uh, the first night that Herschel Gordon Lewis came in to the set. We were still dressing to, to do the, uh, the shoot the next day. It was the day before the, the shoot began, actually. He came in, and it was like story time. Everyone just pulled up a chair and sat around him, and he just would tell stories. You know, he would talk about an industry and, and a time that, that uh, was just really fascinating. It's something that we can't easily relate to. Um, and the way he talked about how his productions were pulled off and how he would find distribution for them and the kind of dealings he'd have with the individual theater. Originally, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing because I knew how little we had put into these movies. But subsequently, when I see how much the film industry has either evolved or devolved, depending on how you want to interpret it, based on that, I am truly delighted to be regarded in that respect. I don't want it on my tombstone. Yeah. I don't want them to say, here lies the guy who started gore movies. Our, our first day of production was with Herschel. And I was very scared that I was going to get in there and you know, fuck up right there in front of this this man that I just idolize. So camera is here. here. It can either be there or it can be... Well, you're going to need to do I promise for a shot, reverse shot, that gives us all of this to worry about. I figure if we, if we go from, from this side of the axis and we're looking at, you know, we have the shot, reverse shot, right. and we can go for a two. And That'll be one year, but all the coverage is going to be minus 50 high way to grab. How close are we? We're about five minutes. Okay. You want to run it one more time yes, without indeed. me in the way? Sure. Let me uh, take another. When you're making your first movie, you have no idea what you're getting into. Whether it's going to be a disaster or a smash. We got in there. We got to work. He was professional. He knew his. He knew his lines. He never once said to me. You know, what I would do is, or what I would suggest here is, he was an actor. He was there to act, and he, he lit up the screen. The very first day that we shot was also the day that we shot with Herschel, so that was kind of intense. So it was a little bit intimidating because Herschel's this well-known, I mean, he's the godfather of gore, but I'd already met him, so it wasn't too nerve-wracking because I knew what a nice guy he was. I mean, he's just... The most charming man you will ever, ever meet. What can I do you for? We're having a special in our gardening section. 
Oh, that sounds swell, but Alta really needs a new handle for our hammer. Oh, wow, you must have really been <laughs> whacking the heck out of somebody. Oh, something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know That's why I had Let's see what we have. Now, sh shall I go this way? Shall I do what? Um, I'd like to see you just turn your back and because okay. that's, yes sir. Okay. Um, and you are going to move down that from the top. It was great to work with him, really. It was a really, it was a great way to start the movie off because he was, he, he knew what he was doing and that just kind of uh, worked as sort of a glue for other people, I think. Let's take a deep breath. You want to roll one? You look beautiful, Herschel. You know what? Well, pretty is all right. <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty beautiful. I said, wow, let's do it. Okay, here we go. Lock it up. Hold the walking and the work. No talking. Action. Well, hello, Miss Sally. How are you this fine and beautiful day? Hunky dory, Mr. Gordon. And you? Can't complain. And even if you did, who no would listen? listen. <laughs> so I got an email from him saying, hey, I'm going to make a movie. Do you want to be in it? And I said, you got to be kidding. What would I possibly do? He says, no, if you're available at all, be in my movie. Well, it turned out that timing is perfect because I. Here I am in Baltimore. I've got to be in Rochester, New York tomorrow, so it's right on the way. And I had a good time today. It was really, it was just really cool. As a horror fan, uh, it was just, it was cool. If there wasn't a Herschel Gordon Lewis, there wouldn't be a Rock Savage, because he inspired me to make films when I heard about him back in the 70s when I was in high school. Uh, it was wonderful to actually meet these people, and, and not only have And Rock Savage. Yeah, and of course rock. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of rocks ever since uh, like three or four months ago. Yes, we're having lots of fun here filming Chainsaw Sally, the movie. m and good. <laughs> yes, m and are great. The music in a movie can make or break it. Um, we've had a lot of comments about the music selections that we've made. We've, we've, had, we've been lucky enough to, to hook up with some really great independent bands and uh, writers and performers. Um, I think the right song at the right time, whether it's complex or simple or even just a beat in the background, can make a scene um, come alive and it can, it can give uh, an audience member that, that chill down their spine or the, it, it can pump their adrenaline up to get them ready. I was in the flashbacks when she was a, when Chainsaw Sally was a kid. I was Sally, little Sally. We're all walking on the two stairs, and I come here. So walk, walk. I got to be all dramatic. Mommy. <laughs> The best part is probably I've got my I've got more friends because of it, and I think it's cool. My friends are always asking me if they can be in the movie, and it gets kind of annoying after a while. It's like that's all they want to talk to me about. It's just all around been a great experience, and it's fun. My favorite part about filmmaking is the really incredible people that we get to meet and hang out with. And that's not just like hanging out with Gunnar and Herschel and, and all the, you know, the movie icons. Um, we've, we've made some of the best friends of our life, you know, uh, making this movie. And I hope to make more. That, that, that's by far my favorite thing about filmmaking is, is all the people that you get to interact with, get to know, and hopefully make a friendship out of. The crew was really amazing. Most of the crew was assembled by our producer, Mark Redfield. But uh, we had this incredible um, DP, uh, Mike Flanagan, who just made the, the, the picture so beautiful. And his lighting was exactly what I wanted. Um, I, I wanted very specific things as far as the lighting goes. And, and he delivered. It was, it was great. Um, DJ Summit was our uh, boom guy. Uh, my name is DJ Summit. I was the uh, boom operator. DJ, the boom's in the shot. 
What was it like working with the DMI planning? It was really, really nice. You know, the thing is, I could give labels to everybody, except that in an independent film, everybody's a little bit of everything. So, I mean, our crew was DJ and Mike and Sean and Beth and Joe Anastasio. Um, uh, even Jennifer Rouse, who was uh, the ice cream girl and the, one of the associate producers of the thing, I mean, she was just really, really incredible. I really owe her like a dozen roses sometime down the road when I can afford them. Compared to my experiences, I mean, on my, on my film, um, Dead Fellow Lives, I mean, I was pretty much the whole crew. So, moving up to Silver Scream and we had two people. <laughs> now this to, to four. Twice as many. I mean, it's like each time we just, you know, just double. So next time when we have eight people, or we uh, the Everything just seemed to flow on it so well. There's a certain satisfaction about having a story to tell and then being able to, being able to actually tell it with the use of, it, uh, of other people, but the, the thing that I learned in this, in this movie is that being a director does not mean control. Being director means you've got to learn how to delegate. Um, and you've got to trust the people that you're delegating to. Uh, if you don't trust them, they're not going to be able to deliver what you want. Uh, so you've got to be able to let these people go and bring you back choices and then you take these choices and you can put together a great movie. If I were to try to do it all and, and do a, some type of director power trip thing, um, it would be very one-sided and flat. People just gravitate towards the character. It's just something hard on fans. Like, I don't think it's been done as well as, as April pulls off the character. It's just a lot of fun. It's like a roller coaster. Uh, Jimmy invented this little thing that it's going to be like a park ride, um, an amusement park. And we started out with all rides, a different ride every day. I think people are going to love Chainsaw Sally. I think it's going to be a really fun, really exciting movie to watch. It was a fun, exciting movie to make. I have a feeling that we're standing on the threshold of a franchise here. The, the fan base that's been growing around this character is just uh, incredible. and. Um, it's, it's been wonderful to work on. It really has. So whatever you have to say is going to doesn't endure forever. You know, if you, if you screw with any, if you, if you screw with Christmas, it makes people fans of And that's what we want in this movie. Oh, we want to hear all, of, all, through, right? all, through the, all through the audience, we want to hear. <laughs> hey, what's that in your face? Did you get the giant silver cup? You can get a tube with a cup on the top of the spirit case. I'm still trying to turn myself. Here's a rapper. Yo, yo. Come to Maryland. <laughs> the city that breathes. Tell me how many years have you Hi, I'm Fran Lane. Join me weeknights from 7 until midnight for Baltimore's best love songs on the nightlight from Light FM. Need the coordinator next week. Right. I'll, 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 I need some pointers, Jim. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you the best way to, to mate with my wife. M-O-L-T. <laughs> <laughs> you never learn! I wore a lot of hats. And uh, I'm the type of guy that uh, I'll do whatever needs to be done to get the job done. There's been a lot of hats to work with everybody. Hats? I wore a hat in the movie. How many hats? You know, I didn't really have time for hats. Um, I think April wore a hat, and uh, Sean, when he played uh, his character, wore a hat. And uh, our boom man, DJ, wore a hat. Uh, with safety pins on it. No, clothes pins. Clothes pins on it. I'm not really sure why he had clothes pins on it, but he seemed to always have them. Uh, but I personally didn't have time for it, so I was too busy actually making it. 
that my that bloody valentine yeah. let's take advantage sweet of comic valentine yeah. sound lights going but let's just keep going until we with the sound of chainsaws